hearty good morning to all from our oxford reading circle course book in page number 60 we have a love story romeo and juliet students romeo and juliet is a playwright by william shakespeare this playwright is abridged by charles lamb and mary lamb meaning this story has been shortened by charles lamb and mary lamb charles lamb and mary lamb were siblings students let's have some talkings about charles lamb Charles Lamb was an English essayist, poet, and antiquarian, best known for his essays of Elia and for children's book Tales from Shakespeare, co-authored with his sister Mary Lamb. Charles Lamb was born on 10th February 1775 in Inner Temple, London, England, and died on 27 December 1834 in Admonton, London, England. Now let's talk about Mary Lamb Mary Lamb was an English writer she is best known for the collaboration with her brother Charles Lamb on the collection Tales from Shakespeare Mary Lamb was born on 3rd December 1764 in London England and died on 28th May 1847 in London England She was known by her pen name Sempronia Students Now let's talk about the characters of the story Romeo and Juliet. In this story there are 14 characters. First is Lord Capulet who is the head of the Capulet family. Second is Lady Capulet who is Lord Capulet's wife. Third is Juliet who is Lord and Lady Capulet's daughter. Fourth is Tybalt who is Lord Capulet's nephew and cousin of Juliet. Fifth is Lord Montague who is the head of the Montague family. Sixth is Lady Montague who is Lord Montague's wife. Seventh is Romeo who is Lord and Lady Montague's son. Eighth is Benvolio who is Lord Montague's nephew and Romeo's friend. Ninth is Mercutio who is Romeo's friend and kinsman of Ascalus. Tenth is Friar Lawrence who is a Franciscan monk. 11th is prince ascalus who holds authority in verona 12th is count paris who is a kinsman of ascalus 13th is balthazar who is romeo's servant and 14th is a wet nurse who takes care of juliet but her name is not mentioned in the story the theme of the story romeo and juliet is love students Let me tell you the outlines of the story Romeo and Juliet. A prolonged bitter quarrel between two powerful families Capulet and Montague erupts into bloodshed. A group of masked Montagues risk further conflict by gate crashing a Capulet party. A young lovesick Romeo Montague falls instantly in love with Juliet Capulet. who is due to marry her father's choice count paris at the end count paris romeo and juliet all three of them lose their lives now step into the lesson welcome back to the story romeo and juliet abridged by charles lamb and mary lamb in this story two families are highlighted in verona who are well known for their royalties One side is the Capulets and on the other side is the Montagues. These two families had their old quarrel and it had grown to its height. The servant of the Capulet could not meet the servant of the Montague. Similarly, nor a Capulet encounter with a Montague. If by chance they met, it was sure that some great incident would take place on the spot. Whenever these two families meet accidentally they disturb the happy and quiet streets of Verona the people are attracted by their fires and usual act so one day what happened old lord capulet arranged a great supper many fair ladies and noble guests were invited in that feast it was a grand feast of grand people all were welcomed except the montagues in this feast rosaline the beloved of romeo had also arrived so benvolio persuaded romeo to see his beloved in the grand feast romeo loved rosaline 
but he don't know whether Rosalind loves him yet. It was one-sided love. Students, one wish to have a glass of the person whom one loves, isn't it? So, Romeo agreed to go to the feast along with his friends Benvolio and Mercutio. But one problem was there. If any Capulet would see them in their feast, they would try to offend them. So, what did they do? They went masked. When they reached the house, old Capulet welcomed them and allowed them to join the feast. He remembered his youth and smiled on them. He said that he had worn a mask when he was a youth like them. Now, all three of them went inside. You know, Romeo was suddenly struck with the exceeding beauty of a lady. She was dancing gracefully. The dance and her beauty both attract Romeo. He forgot Rosalind and his heart got slipped. Who was that lady? She was Juliet Capulet. We came to know that lady was Juliet, but Romeo was unknown, isn't it? Now, his heart started beating faster than before and a flash of light of his sight praised the beauty of Juliet. He uttered some admirable words for Juliet. He saw nothing but Juliet, only Juliet. Then, as he was uttering praises for Juliet, he was overheard by Tybalt. Tybalt came to understand that the voice was of Romeo the Montague. He would have struck Romeo, but the old Lord Capulet, his uncle, did not allow him to do so. He was told to keep patience. The disguised Romeo took Juliet by the hand gently. They were supposed to exchange a few words before Juliet was called away to her mother. Now Romeo came to know that she was no one else but Juliet, daughter and heir of the old Lord Capulet, the great enemy of the Montagues. Unknowingly, he had laid his heart under the feet of Juliet. On the other hand, later, Juliet also came to know that with whom she had spoken some words earlier was no one else but Romeo a Montague. Now, it was almost midnight. It seemed impossible for Romeo to leave that house and go away. Why? Because he had left his heart. So, what did he do? He left the wall of an orchard which was at the back of Juliet's house. There, he viewed Juliet at the window. She was lost in herself as if her heart calls Romeo, seeks Romeo and wishes to be with Romeo. Just then, she heard a man's voice in the garden. She paused. Again, she heard the voice. Now, she knew that it was Romeo. So, she asked suddenly that, who led him to read there? And who directed him? Romeo answered that, love directed him. He was lovesick of Juliet. Whatever Juliet was thinking, and left over to say it was completed by Romeo's actions and words, just as a soulmate. Then, Juliet was called away by her nurse for it was the time to go to bed. Then, for a while, Juliet told Romeo if his love was indeed honourable and his purpose marriage a point of time. When they were parted, various thoughts knocked Romeo's mind and instead of going home, he went to find Fry Lawrence. Fry Lawrence saw Romeo and he guessed the cause that Romeo's wakefulness was love. According to Fry Lawrence, it was the best time to make peace between Capulets and Montagues by joining their hands in marriage. Later, Juliet received the message of Romeo and reached the cell of Fry Lawrence and there both Romeo and Juliet were joined in holy marriage. Now, they were husband and wife. But to escape the people after the ceremony, she hurried home and there she waited impatiently for the night to come. So that, according to the promise of Romeo, they can spend the night together. So, anyhow, the whole day she had to spend alone at her home. Next, in that very day, at noon, what happened, we will come to know later. 
Once again, welcome back to the lesson Romeo and Juliet, abridged by Charles Lamb and Mary Lamb. Benvolio and Mercutio were walking through the streets of Verona. Accidentally, both were met by Tybalt, who was the head of his party fellows. Tybalt broke out the matter of the last feast where he had seen both of them along with Romeo. The words were thrown out from Tybalt's mouth like arrows which break the front one. Then the sharp voice were heard and so the quarrel began. Mercutio and Tybalt both were throwing words to each other. Then what happened? Through the same street, Romeo was passing by. Seeing Romeo, Tybalt turned from Mercutio to Romeo and addressed Romeo a villain. Romeo wished to avoid the quarrel, for as being Montagues, they were not interested in interrupting the Capulets. The most remarkable point to be noted was, Romeo was the kinsman of Juliet. And second point was, he never thoroughly entered into the family quarrels. He had no quarrel business with anyone. He seeks love and peace and nothing else. But here, the situation was such that, Mercutio was unable to read Romeo's secret motive and so he provoked Tybalt. Now what happened? Tybalt and Mercutio fought. In this fight, Mercutio was wounded and received death. Seeing his friend dead, Romeo's anger emerged and he slain Tybalt. This event invited the crowd to the spot. Lady Capulet and Lady Montague both arrived. The prince arrived too. Benvolio, who was the witness, was commanded to explain the whole matter so that the truth prevails. One side, Lady Capulet was in extreme grief for the loss of Tybalt and on the other side, Lady Montague was pleading for her child's life. Between these two families, the prince pronounced his sentence and banished Romeo from Verona. When this news reached Juliet, she came to rage and called Romeo a beautiful tyrant, a ravenous doe, a lamb with a wolf's nature, so and so forth. Why? Did you know? Because her dear cousin Tybalt had been slain by Romeo. You know, slowly, slowly, the tears of grief changed into the tears of joy. Why so like this? Because after all, her husband was alive. Now what happened? Till now, Romeo had not gone to Mantua. He had taken refuge in Fry Lawrence's cell. He had promised Juliet to spend the night with her. So, that night, Romeo passed with his dear wife. Then, early morning, he took his leave with a heavy heart and promised Juliet that every hour he would write to her from Mantua. Now, the old Lord Capulet proposed a match for Juliet. The husband had been chosen for her and he was Count Paris. From this engagement, Juliet was not pleased at all. She made many excuses, but like a deaf, her father paid no heed. Juliet was in distress. She went to Fry Lawrence and disclosed everything. That she was told to give her consent to marry Paris. Then Fry gave a potion and told her it will effect for 24 hours. Means after drinking it, she should appear cool and lifeless. And when the bridegroom will come to fetch her, he would find her dead. Then what happened? On Wednesday night, Juliet swallowed a dose of medicine and became insensible. And on Thursday, the marriage ceremony with Count Paris would take place. This was the fact. So, before the marriage ceremony on Wednesday night, Juliet did so. A few minutes later, Paris came with music to awaken his bride, but the situation was something different. Juliet's chamber presented a dreary situation. All the people looked gloomy. Students, bad news travel faster than good, isn't it? So, later, Romeo got the message that his beloved Juliet is no more. You know, 
Before the messenger's arrival, Romeo got this fake news that Juliet has died. Actually, she was cold only for 24 hours, isn't it? But Romeo thought that Juliet is no more. He went to a pharmacist, bought poison and with that poison, he set for Verona with his servant Balthazar on his horse. At midnight, he reached the churchyard at Verona. He found the ancient tomb of the Capulets and there he was interrupted by the young Count Paris, who had come to weep over the grave. Paris did not know what interest Romeo had in the dead Juliet, but he knew he was a Montague and was banished from Verona, what was the reason and so and so forth. Romeo urged Paris to leave him but Count refused. They fought and Paris fell. Later, Romeo came to know that whom he had slain was Paris, who should have married Juliet. He took the dead youth by the hand and said that he would bury him in Juliet's grave. He opened Juliet's grave where his lady laid in her matchless beauty. Near her table was laid. Now what happened to Romeo? He thought his lady is no more now. It is useless for me to be alive. Thinking this, he took his last leave of his lady and swallowed the poison which he had bought from the pharmacist. Now the time arrived at which Juliet should awake. Juliet awoke and asked for Romeo, but Fry fled because he heard the noise of people coming. Juliet saw the cup closed in her true love's hand and she guessed that poison had been the cause of his end. Now, for whom she would live a life? So, she pulled out her naked dagger which she wore and stabbed herself dead by Romeo's side. This event brought the Lord Capulet and the Lord Montague out of the beds with the prince. The fry came too, trembling, sighing and weeping. He declared the fatal love of Romeo and Juliet in front of both the families. The remaining matter was completed by the servant who had witnessed Paris and Romeo's fight. Hearing this, the prince rebuked Lord Capulet and Lord Montague, both the families and said that due to their enmity, their children had lost their lives. The dead had tried to build peace between both the families, but enmity trampled it. The prince told them to bury their enmities in their children's grave. And like this, the love story of Romeo and Juliet came to the end. Thank you.